Hello everyone, I'm Madhusudan Raj, this is 22nd September 2012 and I'm back with my weekly economic report. So today I'm going to begin with uh, some more Reserve Bank of India related news. Last week on Monday they announced their uh, this quarter's monetary policy and they they did not uh, do anything, they did not touch their uh, repo rate and reverse repo rate. They kept it as it is. Uh, repo rate was uh, 8% and they kept the reverse repo rate at 7%. And uh, government, uh, uh, governor, RBI governor Dubi Subbarao, he said that he is very much concerned about the inflation. He said that the primary focus of monetary policy remains on containment of inflation and anchoring of inflation expectations. Despite all this job owning, uh, as I said, you know, what we have to look at actually is not what RBI governors, uh, governors is saying, but what RBI governor actually is doing. So he is saying on one side that he is very much concerned and he wants to contain inflation, but on the same day, although he did not you know, change the policy rates, repo and reverse repo rate, but he did reduce the credit reserve ratio, the CRR by 25 basis points to 4.50%, which injected total 17,000 crore rupees into the Indian economy. So, as I said, there is a contradiction between what governor is saying on one side and what he is actually doing on the other side. He is saying that he wants to contain inflation by release, but by releasing this 17,000 crore rupees into the Indian economy, he actually created inflation. <laughs> right? This is inflation, Mr. Dubai Subbarao, when you are pumping this money out of thin air by creating money out of thin air and pumping it into the economy that is what is going to you know create a lot of distortions into the productive structure of the economy that is what is going to transfer wealth from from those who are not you know going to receive this freshly printed money in the first place uh, to those who will receive this money in the first place and it is also going to in the end uh, increase the prices of various economic goods various commodities so this is inflation so you know stop stop you know all this rhetoric and, and as i said if there is only one way of reducing inflation in indian economy and that is for rbi to stop printing money and ultimately we will need to dismantle rbi and we need to go back to pure gold standard there are many other uh, changes which are also required but at least we can if we can change the monetary system you know from this you know so-called functional finance to sound finance if we can you know bring back sound monetary system then inflation will be you know completely eradicated it will be very much you know under control as long as that is not happening inflation is you know always going to remain you know out, out of control of uh, these policy makers because you know they don't understand what actually inflation is okay uh, last week I also said that government Manmohan Singh government announced a lot of you know uh, uh, policy reforms which were you know uh, geared towards increasing the economic growth of India you know as I said they want to revive the animal spirits of this economy so and I also said last week that you know what how many you know, how many reforms they are going to actually carry out further and finish it that's what is important because so far the record of this government is that they will immediately backtrack once the political backlash will start and immediately political backlash started Mamta Banerjee last week uh, withdrew her support from the UPA government and now the uh, Trinamool, TMC, Trinamool Congress, um, um, uh, MPs, they all resigned from UPA government. Uh, looking at this backtrack, Mulayam Singh and other, other parties are also threatening that they are going to remove their support from the UPA government, which they are, I think, uh, giving from outside. So the government itself is not in big trouble right now, but they can get into trouble. So immediately they started backtracking all, all these policy reforms. So the first thing they announced, they are, you know, as I said, this is all 
politics going on there is no economic reforms you know uh, congress uh, announced that congress led states are going to give now nine subsidized gas cylinder instead of just six which they originally announced so now they're they are just they're just doing it into their statements where congress party is ruling the state government uh, so this is a pure political move so they will say in the 2014 coming election that look we did increase the number of you know subsidized cylinder from six to nine your state government maybe if, if it is ruled by let's say bjp they did not increase so you have to blame them and give your vote to us it's just vote politics nothing more than that not only that they are also mulling a partial rollback in diesel price hike i told you that last week they increased diesel price by five rupees so now they are thinking that they will have to roll it back because there is a lot of you know up uproar and a lot, lot of backlash in between different political parties the communist parties you know the bjp they also announced you know last week uh, there was actually a uh, so called uh, this uh, bharat band uh, many store owners they went on you know a kind of uh, you know a shutdown uh, protesting against this you know increase fdi limit into the retail market but the government uh, gave a green signal to fdi in retail but as i said this is all politics because you know there are a lot of strings attached to this policy reform also actually individual state they will decide whether they are going to open their local markets for this foreign companies or not and this is not really true free market capitalism this is all fascism so only those companies will be able to enter the indian market who are going to pay a lot of hefty bribe to these politicians and you know those who can muscle their way from this bureaucratic departments only they are the ones who are going to get entry and uh, only few people are going to benefit from this policy reforms majority of people are not going to really benefit this is just you know chronic capitalism it's not it's not pure free market you know changes you cannot expect that kind of changes from the government uh, they are also doing many of the things to you know uh, uh, again as i said to revive the animal spirits of of indian economy a uh, government uh, to slash uh the uh, limit on foreign borrowing by the local private companies you know uh, sorry the, uh, they want to slash the tax on borrowing by borrowing by uh, uh, local companies foreign foreign borrowing by the local companies so previously the tax on foreign borrowing was 20% and uh, government is going to slash that to 5% well, I, one thing is very clear you know which i simply don't understand is that how increased borrowing from outside is going to solve the problem of this private companies who are already into a lot of debt you know their external borrowing is already very high and borrowing more money from outside is not going to help anyone the situation we are in right now is created by the prior borrowings you know reckless borrowing you know uh, spending your money out of your means you know outside your means and that that is what has created this artificial boom so um, borrowing more from outside is only going to prolong this boom for a while and ultimately it is all going to bust and when when the recession the depression will hit it will hit very hard because the correction which will take place later on they are going to be very very deep and it's it's going to be very long also very 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 much excru excruciating pain is going to be there but anyways you know government is doing something because the you know they need to show something because the elections are approaching very fast it's just you know one or two years time and i'm sure I'm pretty much sure that they will arrive before 2014 so it's all political gimmick going on right now government also to relax minimum requirement for carriers to fly overseas those you know airline companies who want to fly abroad they are going to you know have less minimum requirements now the the issue over here is that what the government is doing you know managing and regulating the aviation industry in the first place why these companies will have to go and ask for government permission and they have to follow the government's minimum requirements to fly abroad that that is the fundamental question in the absence of government the free market profit seeking aviation you know this airline companies will do everything to you know make the flights more safe and more secure and more comfortable 
profit seeking companies have every incentive to serve their consumers in the best possible way and as I said the best possible way to serve their consumer is to provide high quality services at the lowest possible price and and the free market is going to regulate all these companies the regulator will be the free market the consumers demand you know they're they're buying and and they're not buying they're refraining from buying their products the profit and loss system the price system will regulate everything we don't need government to tell the companies that what they need to do and what they don't need to do to fly abroad so that's what is a fundamental issue all right on the other side as i said rbi is after gold uh, since last long it is their target now because they they know that this gold import is going to you know is go is giving a lot of you know trouble to the government and uh, rbi's own books also so rbi is mulling financial products to check gold imports uh, subir gokran he's rbi's rbi's official he said that and what kind of financial products RBI is going to offer? They are going to offer gold EDF, which is just another paper gold, just another paper promise. And not only that, the whole scam is, you know, being declared very frankly by Subir Gokran, RBI official himself. He is saying that we can provide people with financial attraction of gold without them having physically own it. So there you go. You you are not going to physically own it. And one thing you have to keep in your mind is that if you if you don't physically you know have it, you you don't physically hold it, you you actually don't own it. You are not the owner. If you are not going to physically own it, that gold is not going to help you when there is some emergency situation. And why people are buying gold and silver? It is because they want to make their future secure. As I said, gold and silver is primarily. Money, it's not an investment, you know, basically. So, uh, why you keep cash balances in your hand because you want to, you know, have some kind of control over future uncertainties, and all these uncertainties are very much high right now because of governments, all this stupid kind of policies. So, they are creating this regime uncertainty, and that's why people are buying gold, and now they're saying that. Oh, uh, you invest in uh, another paper gold, another paper promise, and and that's what is going to give you some kind of benefit. No, it's not going to give any kind of benefit. So my advice again for is to you know not to get fooled by RBI's this kind of scam schemes and stay away from any kind of gold ETF or silver ETF because these are all paper promises and and they are not going to help actually anyone. So you better you know hold physical gold and physical silver in your hand whatever is in your hand is only yours and that is only going to save you when there is going to be some kind of a problem SBI also cut the lending rate as I said most of the banks are now cutting the rates and um, this is you know going to give a lot of pain to the savers because there are very few options right now this is just going to prolong the artificial you know boom also and ultimately it is going to result into bust uh, in other news uh, uh, the MBA bubble has popped in India, this management courses. Tough demand and supply lessons for business schools. 140 MBA schools expected to close this year. This I was telling since you know quite long to my students that all these so-called professional courses are are just a huge bubble. The educational bubble is another big bubble which is you know not in people's you know radar, but that bubble is popping right now. We don't need this many you know professionals this many because the service sector is you know way too huge you know than what actually is you know the situation is demanding it is more than 50 percent of Indian economy it's mostly banking IT and insurance and other such services it is way too over the actually the agriculture sector share is declining and that is what is most troubling because if farmers are not there then who is going to put food on our table so maybe the ultimately what's going to happen is uh, uh, all these people, all these students will have to move into the direction of farming and manufacturing and other kind of job. As the legendary investor, you know, uh, uh, Jim Rogers is saying that the future is in the farming, and I think he's correct. Future is going to be in the farming because they're losing farmers all over the world. There, there are droughts going on in many different parts of the world, so somebody will have to produce food because that's the basic requirement. Services comes later on. So, but in any case, these MBA schools are now closing down very fast, and 
service sector is also shrinking pretty rapidly and that's what we need. Last but not least, uh, Indian government is very busy wasting, you know, taxpayers' hard-earned money. You know, there are few ways in which they are wasting all this thing. First thing is that India to launch Mars mission in 2013. They want to find um, a methane on Mars. Uh, they also want to develop a new supercomputer. Uh, you remember Akash tablet, it, it, that project already failed. People who booked Akash tablet, they haven't yet, you know, got the deliveries because, you know, there was all kind of problem between the private firm who was manufacturing and the government. And uh, they also want to build particle accelerator to find neutrinos in somewhere in Kerala. So these are all, these are all, you know, uh, as I said, there, there are opportunity cost of doing all this thing. And, and these things are, these finances are, you know, funded by the taxpayers. So these resources, you know, in a country like India where millions of people are going hungry every day, government cannot afford to send, you know, Mars mission and government cannot afford to, you know, just compete with, you know, with America and China and Japan to build, you know, new supercomputers and build particle accelerators and everything. You know, the priorities are, you know, market is going to decide whether these things are required or not. As I said, when people are going hungry, they don't have enough cloth on their, on their body, they don't have a shelter on their, you know, head, then all these resources are actually wasted. If all these scientists are very much interested in sending a Mars mission, then why don't they start their own private company and, and offload their stock into the, into, the, into the stock market and let the private investor fund their uh, all these adventures, you know. Why burden the taxpayer? Why loot the taxpayers? So all these scientists, so-called scientists, they are also busy looting the taxpayer with the government, nothing more than that. In any case, you know, this week, these things are happening and I think uh, the, the, the election season is coming sooner, so a lot of political events are going to take place, you know. So you stay tuned, I will be anal analyzing all these issues as they, as they, you know, come in front of me in future. Alright, so thank you very much for watching me and I'll see you late, you know, next week. Goodbye.